This is David. Today I'm going to talk about the Microsoft Graph API. Microsoft Graph API is a terrific API. It's uh, uh, simply a, a REST API you can call through HTTP or HTTPS, and it allows you access to anything inside of Microsoft 365. So that includes oh, user accounts, uh, Active Directory information, email, OneDrive, files, uh, calendar information. So you could read, you can create and update and delete these objects. Pretty, it's pretty simple to use, pretty well documented too. I just can I can search for Microsoft Graph API reference on my favorite search engine, which happens to be Microsoft Bing. And the very first link here, Microsoft Graph API v1.0 endpoint reference, gives you information about how to call it and all the different things that are available to you. So if I want to know about users down here, I can see how to list users, create users, update, etc. But you can see there's also things with uh, email and people and photos and files and so on. Uh, now, yes, it is pretty simple, but there are some prerequisites to calling it. I want to call those out here. In order to call the Microsoft Graph API, I'm going to have to pass a bearer token to it. And a bearer token tells the Graph API under what account is this API call running. Um, so I didn't have, you have to be that that account has to be authenticated by someone like Azure Active Directory, Directory, some trusted authority, and in order to create a token, I need to have a tenant ID, an application ID, and a client secret. Plus, that account has to have permission to do whatever it is that API wants to do. So if I want to read user account information, it must have user read it access. It must have those permissions ahead of time. If I want to create an email, that must have permission to create that email. And in order to do those two things, in order to get an application ID and a client secret and to grant permissions, you must register your app with Azure Active Directory. So these are the prerequisites to actually calling MS Graph API. Once those are set, then you call it a bunch of times and it's fairly simple, but you have a little bit of work to do ahead of time. Most of these things I've covered in other videos, so if I go back to my channel here, then in order to register an application with Active Directory, I covered that in episode 137. It's only about seven and a half minutes long. Go ahead and watch that. Um, if you, to grant Azure Active Directory API permissions, that's covered in uh, video 138, only about four minutes long. And to create a bearer token, I covered that in the last video, video 139. Again, about 10 and a half minutes long. They're not they're not long videos, but I won't waste time doing that here because I've already covered that. What I'll do now is I'll open up the portal and show you. In Azure Active Directory, if I log in, to this sample Contozo account. Then I'll show you that in Azure Active Directory, I have in fact, under app registrations, I have this app registration here, GCAST app registration. Um, there's my client ID, there's my tenant ID. I've created the secret and I've saved that here. I had, uh, it, it uh, disappears from view once you refresh this page, but I did save it in a secure place. I've done that, and then I used Postman to generate a token, which I covered in the last video. So generating token is simply a matter of hitting this URI here with an HTTP post, and part of that URI is the tenant ID, and then I have to pass in the client ID and the client secret along with a couple other things, and I send that, and I get back a token for that allows me to authenticate the account that's used that's registered with that app registration and here's the token right here and this token does have some permissions because in azure active directory under api permission i did grant it user.read.all and i can prove that by decoding that token this this website here jwt.ms if i paste this encoded token in here. Here's the JSON web token right here. And you can see that one of the rules is, in fact, the only rule right now is user.read.all. So it's available. So if I pass this token to the API, then it will use this account and it will uh, have 
access to read all user information. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back into Postman. And in the documentation for Postman, it said this is the URL to get users. HTTPS colon slash slash graph dot Microsoft dot com slash V one dot zero slash users. And I'll set it, hit it with an HTTP get. And the only thing I really have to do here is under authorization, I have to specify a bearer token. So I'm going to use the same bearer token. It starts with EYJ and ends with XSW. I think it's still on my clipboard. So I'll replace this with that bearer token. And I'll click send and I get back an HTTP 200, which means this is OK. And here's a list of users that are in that account. I was able to do that because I had permission. If I try to do something else that I don't have permission for or use an invalid token, then I'll get an unauthorized response. Uh, 401, I think, is what that is. So the call itself is pretty simple. The important thing is to remember what the prerequisites are. And do those ahead of time. Once you have those in place, once you have a token, then as long as that token is valid and it has the permission, the right permissions, then you can call this API as many times as you like. This is David. Thank you for watching.